Is it working? Yes, it is. This is my student. Student, have you ever had any experience with the oboe before? No. Okay, that's perfect. Because today I'm going to share with you a couple of basic tidbits of knowledge about the oboe. So firstly, this is our oboe case. It kind of looks like other woodwinds clarinet specifically, if you've seen that before. It's a small little thing. And here are our little components. We have, let's face the camera so that you can see it. We have our different components of the actual oboe itself. A couple straps, our cleaning swab, and our cork grease just to help things go together. Um, this is called the bell. It's definitely the most unique shape you can tell because, you know, it's a bell, bell shaped thing. That's what it's called. This is the lower joint. It's the longer of the two little black pieces that have the buttons on it. It's also wider where the cork is, lower joint. And then the last one is the upper joint. And at the top of the upper joint, you can see the little hole, and that's where we put the reed in. The reed is the thing that goes in our mouth and is the thing that vibrates and makes the sound. Um, so to assemble uh, our oboe, what we are first going to do is take the bell and put it into the bottom of the lower joint. When you line it up, you should see there's, uh, you see this row of buttons right here, mm -hmm. and it uh, follows down this, this nice little shaft. The label should be right in the middle of that straight line. You're going to want to hold it like this, making sure that you're being gentle with the buttons, obviously it's a very fragile instrument, um, and just twist nice and gently until you've got a snug fit. Now, I did just use cork grease on this oboe specifically yesterday, but if it's too hard to assemble it, what you can do is take it, it kind of looks like chapstick, actually just pull it off and put a little bit of it on the cork until it's a little bit easier to screw in. It doesn't need it today, uh, but that's something that you can do. And definitely don't use it as chapstick. Uh, this is the hardest part of assembling the oboe for a couple different reasons. Firstly, I've got big hands. It's hard for me to hold this without like crunching the buttons. So you got to get a good grip, firm grip, without destroying anything. And the second thing is, you see right there where that's going to yeah. line up? Yep. And the same thing on the other side. You got to make sure that those are lined up and that they're not going to crush each other. So again, a little bit of twi gentle twisting until you can see that that has been lined up properly and there's no gap anywhere. You see that? Yep. Okay, cool. And then following this, we'll put the reed in and we're going to be ready to play. Now the reed is actually uh, kind of an interesting thing because as soon as we've assembled the instrument, we're still not ready to play it. We need to do what is known as soaking the reed. So the oboe is a double reed instrument. Uh, you know what that means, double reed? Two reeds. Yes, that's right. So two reeds are actually collapsed in on each other and there's like a little hole at the end and the wood vibrates against itself. So in order to make that process be as easy as possible for it to vibrate as well as it can, the reeds need to be soaked with water, not dry. Dry can, it'll hurt your mouth, the reeds will crack, reeds are expensive, you don't want to do that to soak the reeds. The reeds need to be soaked um, for about three to five minutes. You can go longer if you want to, but they just need to be thoroughly soaked with water before we play the oboe. So I'm going to show you. What it looks like this is I use a pill bottle just because it's the easiest. You put a lid on it, you know, it's just easier that way. So this is what your reed looks like. It's going to be a little bit wet when you take it out to play. Uh, before you put it in the instrument to play, you want to shake it off a little bit. Um, maybe suck it out just a little bit to make sure there's no water left in there. And your reed should, uh, should be ready to go. Now before we actually play using the reed, there are a couple other things that... Um, I need to cover with you more specifically is embouchure formation. So uh, you know an embouchure is like the shape of your mouth. So the oboe embouchure is kind of a unique one. Um, how you're going to form the oboe embouchure is say say the word who. Who. See how your lips go who and then freeze. Who. Yeah, see that? So you see how your lips are kind of pursed? They're like on the front of your teeth almost. Mm -hmm. So teeth are like the worst enemy of a reed instrument, especially a double reed because it's actually going inside of your mouth. And the reason why we say who is because it makes a very small opening, which is just what you want for a small instrument like this, and or a small reed like this, and it covers your teeth. You don't want the reed to be sitting on your teeth. You want just the tip of it to be inside of your mouth. Your corners should be firm but not tense, and your chin should be flat. So if you could say who again, who, and leave it right there, imagine the reed sitting right inside of your mouth. The, your lips, if you give... Probably get rid of my bell, huh? Yeah, <laughs> probably. Um, you know... Keep talking. Do you ever use like those tiny little coffee straws? 
Sure. Like at Starbucks. Like, do you ever actually sift through them? Yeah. Imagine blowing the other way. Like through one of those little tiny black coffee straws. That's kind of what it feels like. It should be just right in your mouth. And not biting it, obviously. Just shooting right in there. Watch. See if you can pick up on the things that I say. I'm going to put it in my mouth and demonstrate for you. So, who? I'll say who. And then Can you see how far it's in my mouth? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, it looks like it's about halfway in, but as far as actually how much it's in my mouth, really not just the very tip because that's the part that vibrates Just on the best. lips. Yeah, yeah, just, just enough to get inside your mouth. And the first thing that actually we're going to do today is called crowing, which is making a sound using just the reed. It's like buzzing on a brass mouthpiece. Like it you are, yeah. I'm going to demonstrate it for you first. The, keep in mind when you're playing oboe, just like any other reed instrument, Breath support's really important, so you're going to want to sit with your feet flat on the floor, with your back nice and straight, and take just a really big, relaxed breath through the mouth. Like that. Now, the air that you blow through, in order to get this to vibrate, the air pressure has to be really high, even though not a lot of air is coming through. So make sure that you're blowing hard, even though not a lot's going to come out. And at some point, actually, it's going to feel like there's a lot of pressure building up in here. Don't let yourself get too tense. Just keep going. Right now, what I feel is a lot of pushing here and a lot of support from my mouth, keeping the air where it needs to be as compared to kind of thing. You know, it's a lot of air pressure. Did I spit on you? No, I spit just on kidding. You. Okay. There you go. Go ahead and try it with your good embouchure before you make any noise. Say who. Feet flat on the floor. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. more. Now take your big breath and blow through. Yes, that's really good. You uh, Ooh, it vibrated. right? It vibrate. It definitely vibrates your lips. And you know what I noticed too is, I, and I can tell this because of uh, the creases in the side of your face. You were not gripping the reed, which is good. I forgot to mention that when you have it in your mouth, it should not be lip gripping. It should yeah. just be lip surrounding. Okay. Go ahead and try it again. Yeah, that's... I feel like my face... Right? <laughs> when you're playing really high notes, it feels like your sinuses are going to go. Yeah. At least, I, I don't know if like I'm doing it right, but like when I'm in class and I play with my sinuses, it's like, oh my god! Yeah, I'm in there. Okay. Okay. Um, let us... I did it. Go right. All right. I forgot to no, tell right. you about articulation. I wonder if you have that written here. So if, keep them wet if you're not using them. Articulation. Basically beginning a note. That You know what articulation means mm -hmm. like. Versus kind of thing. Um, to articulate on the oboe in the most general sense, especially when beginning a note, we never want to think about attacking the reed in our mouth. Like for me, that's natural because I play trombone, and a lot of our articulations are bow, 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 with our tongue. But with the oboe, because it's such a fragile reed, what we want to do is we want to think of if this is the reed in the mouth, we want to think of the tongue coming up to the reed. Then the air stream begins and the tongue is removed to articulate. So, kind of thing. The air pressure builds up and the tongue releases it. So try and try and pick up what I'm doing. Try and pick up that concept while I demonstrate this for you. You hear how there's a very like sudden beginning mm -hmm. to the note, and the last thing that I have to say is for ending notes, you don't want to end with the tongue. Just let it ring. You want to try? I ended with the tongue. Yeah, that time I heard you did, yeah. Yes, that was it. Tongue on the reed before you blow. Trickier than ending with the tongue, but I think I'm doing it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's whatever you just did with that tongue, that okay. was a good tongue. 
Do you want to play? Yeah. Let's play. Let's play. So we've already assembled our oboe. You know how to do that. And when we're done, I'll teach you how to disassemble the oboe as well. There's a little bit of care and maintenance that goes into it because it is, it's a really like, I mean, look how intricate that is. I mean, if you're going to play one of these, you got to take care of it pretty well. So when we're going to play, and I'm going to do some testing. Yeah, obviously the lead goes in here. And can you see where these this blue wrapping is? How up at the top here, there's like a little crossover. Like just the tiniest little crossover up at the top. No, because it's not my glasses. Okay. It's also kind of wet. It's hard to see, but it's right there yeah. where it crosses it. So you see how there's okay. It it, it it is kind of hard to see. But there is a crossover. I need And I can see it. It's on this I believe side. You. When you're putting the reed on. You want that crossover to be on your right side. So I've now turned it so the crossover is on this side. Okay. And with the reed, the button's facing away from you. You want to put it on the right side. Just gently insert the reed and give it like a little friendly push until the cork's about halfway in. Okay? And then we're ready to play using the exact same armature. We're going to make our first noise. And the first thing that I have to teach you is actually how to properly hold the oboe. So your right hand thumb, follow my thumb, is going to be tucked up under here, and that's going to be the majority of your support. You can go ahead and do that now. Now follow my fingers. Your first finger is going to go right here, second finger on this button, third finger on this one. That's easy because they're the three biggest buttons. And your pinky is just going to hover above these keys. And for what we learned today, your pinky's not really going to be important. As for your uh, left hand, your left thumb is going to be right here so that you can hit this key if you need to, but you're not on the key. First finger is right here covering that hole. Second finger, third finger, and pinky's hovering above this case. Okay. Does that feel like kind of natural? Yeah. Now, why don't you, imagining, pretending that you're crowing, not pressing any of the buttons down, try and make a noise through the elbow. Can we straighten that out so it's perpendicular? Is it not quite straight? Yeah, I can move it so it's... Is, or should I move the oboe? Oh, it isn't straight. Yeah. If you, I mean, if you want to twist it and make it a little bit more straight. Sometimes I put it in sideways and just like turn it a little bit. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Very good. Very good. Yes, that's exactly right. Yeah, don't push any of the buttons down. You just make a noise. Gosh, my glasses. <laughs> Do you want to use mine? No. Mine are far away glasses, not up close glasses. Oh, yeah. I'm going blind. <laughs> Bigger breath. Yeah, it's a lot of air pressure. Bigger breath, more to push on. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Don't be don't be shy with it. It's a small hole, but you need a lot of air because you need more to push on. Like um, fiber in your guts, and that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> okay, so I, I'm just going to give it a test to make sure that this read is working okay, because I was having some problems yesterday. Sounding significantly better than it was yesterday. Are you gonna get in trouble for giving the student the read you just licked, or did you tell them or they? No, my care? teacher gets that to me all the time. Really? Yeah. Look, when you're and I'm about to defend Miss Jensen. Um, when you're wind player, like, she's not gonna just, discount you for giving you just, me a read you just licked. No, I'm gonna get points out for being late, but that's it. Okay. But like when you're a wind player, look, I'm a trombone man. I like generate puddles after rehearsal. Like you just get used to gross things. Tell her about me. She's my mom, so it's okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I did. I deducted my word teacher. Hey, I, but you're not a wind player. Okay. Okay. You made it sound much better than I did. So, well, I mean, I've been in class, but in that, you've been playing for how many minutes now? Fourteen, 14. minutes and twenty-eight seconds. So, let's let's start learning the F major scale. Um. I'm going to take this out because it needs more time to soak because, I don't know, the reads are being a little bit strange. But if we can learn the fingerings, you've made the sound, you can, you can make it happen. So I'm going to come stand behind you a little bit for me. So can you put your fingers on okay. in the right place? Very good. Yeah, you learned that really fast. 
So the first fingering is going to have this, this, and this all pressed down. Fingering's not doing anything. And over here, this and this are down. And this is actually down, but it's on a different key. If you can look right here, you have this little like jutting that? key. Yes, we call that the banana key. So all, all six down? Yes, and this one's on the little special banana key. Pinky's not doing anything. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So that's that's your first that's your first finger. Do you want to learn the notes? No. Okay. That's that's number one. That is okay. We can keep it simple. That's number one. Number two, your left hand is going to stay the same. Right hand totally opens up. Perfect. That's number two. Number three is on your left hand, ring finger comes up. That's number three. And number four, we're going to go four at a time. Number four is this finger comes back down. Good. Can you show me number one? One, two, three, one, two, three, and the banana key. That's perfect. Yes. Um, number two. Very good. Number three. Yes. And number four. Can you show me those four without my help? Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 And one thing I noticed is that... You probably if, forget. If you look, that's okay. We just need to learn it for today. If you can see, you had your fingers on all the right holes, but on this one specifically, that little tiny hole in the middle wasn't covered. Ah. And actually, it'll make a different note if you press it down, but that hole's not covered. Okay. So, and we'll get to that, actually. You're going to have to use that here in a minute. But for right now, make sure those holes are covered, too. Okay. Okay. So one, two. Show me one again. We'll start at the beginning. Yes. Two. Yes. Three. Very good. Four. Okay. Very good. You've got one, two, three, four. We only have four more to go. So show me four. Yes. And five is middle finger here comes off. That's it. That's really easy. And everything else is really easy except for this next one. The next one, I'll demonstrate it for you. So you're at five right now. You have your first finger here and your first finger here and everything else is off. Maybe not this far, that's bad uh, hand position. But the next, the next thing that you're going to do is all of these come back down. These two come down. And so everything comes back down, everything's down. But the special one is this here, because you slide with this finger up so that hole's uncovered. So this does not go on the banana, it goes on this? Not yet, it will, it'll make it back to the banana key. But it goes down on this. Correct. Yes. And I forgot to mention, mm -hmm. though, you actually were doing a good job because you play piano. When you're holding the oboe, imagine, like, you see how my hand's, like, if, if I took this, I could, like, hold a Coke can, like, really easily. It should be like that. When you're not playing, your fingers should not be like, well, I'm not being used. Just very relaxed, nice above the buttons, like Let me that. Try. This is, there's a lot, of, a lot of fingering here. Yeah. It's a lot. I know. It's a lot of information. And it is not succinct. Okay. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Three. Four. Got all those. Five. Hold on. Five. Easy. Easy. Five. Five? I don't remember five. Which one? Five? Five. Five. Yes. Oh, yeah. I haven't done yes, that yes, yet. Yes. Five. You have to be at one one before you do the tricky one. Okay. Five. Mm -hmm. Six. Six. Yes. And if when we're playing it, if you need to take time with that and stop mm -hmm. and think about it, that's okay. Okay, so we made it to six. That's the tricky one. The last two are really easy. This hand doesn't change at all. Seven is this comes up. This is seven. Eight is it goes back down on the banana key. That's it. Those are the last two very easy. It is complicated. As a trombonist, I can tell you, man, it is complicated. Mm -hmm. I just have a two, but. Let me try it again. One. One. Now I forget the first four. One. Yes. Two, mm -hmm. three, mm -hmm. four, four, yep, five. Yes. So now you're at one, one. What happens? Six. Very good. You got the hole uncovered. Seven. Yes. Eight. Very good. I'm gonna forget the four and five, but you you can help me. That's okay. Let's put the read in. I'll play it for you once to show you what it's gonna sound like, and then it's all you. And if you need help, let me know. The goal of this video is that you'll be able to do it without my help. You don't necessarily need to do it in rhythm, like with a metronome, but you have to be able to play all of the notes without me saying, oh, you need to do this.
But if you if you need help, let me know. Yeah, this is what it is going to not sound like when I play it. To hopefully sound like when you play it. <laughs> I'm losing my eyeballs. I'm not gonna be able to play it that fast. That's okay. I've been doing this because I might all forget. Semester. <laughs> Should be about that. It's how it's being played. Hold on. I'm in brain cramp. Okay, you're at one. One. That's one. Two. Yeah. Just do those two. Three. Yeah. Four. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Five. Flick somebody off, yeah. Six. Six. What is this one? It's on the minute. There you go. Yes, yes, yes. Six. Mm -hmm. Seven. Seven, eight. eight. Yes. Okay, it's at four, five. Okay. Yep. It, it is. It always is. Banana key first. Yes. Try and make Hopefully, it I can make a sound. Yeah. You can. You can do it. You were lower. Are you not? Okay. No, you're good. You weren't pressing that one. Oh, that's okay. a really good tone, too. How about that? Okay, try and go. You're good. That's okay. Yeah, it is. I did no bow. I gotta try that again. You wanna do it again? Yeah. And then I'll teach you how to take it apart and then we'll be done. Look at that finger. Yeah, yep. So you see, you, you're doing everything right, really, but you see how this joint's kind of locked here? That shows me that your hand's like a little bit less than relaxed. That looks really good right there. Yeah. Why am I squeaking it? You're not pressing that down. Mm -mm. No, it's all in the reed when oh, we're doing it. Oh, you got to cover that hole. Oh. Yeah, that's all that it takes. Really? Yep. Second note. Okay. Damn it. You all, you were really close. I just don't remember it, that's all. It's okay. Which one am I on? That was four. Is the hole still uncovered? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. I don't know. No, I can't end like that. That's horrible. I have to get this note. <laughs> You're on six, six, seven, lift it. Oh, yes. I was thinking I was on the wrong, the eighth note. Never mind. Okay. Yay. Okay, now I have to. It wasn't pretty. Out. To take it apart. It happened, and I didn't have to help you. It happened. Yes. So let's talk about okay. taking this apart. Everything that has to do with the oboe is gentle because look at it. <laughs> um, so the first thing that we're going to do, and usually to do this, I, now I have big hands, you could do something else, but the, the main point is don't ever put your hand on the keys and just squeeze yeah. and assume that it's going to be okay. I 
I take my hand so the computer can see it. I use the thumb rest as a point of, of traction. And the reed doesn't require that much force. You pinch really hard. Get it out of there like that. Yeah. Ah. Not that much force. Not that much force. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. She, The teacher can do it. She can, like, bushy finger hold it. And do it like. So there's also a student in the class who plays over me. But regardless. The next thing that you're going to want to do, usually what I do, is I take the upper joint off. So let's open this so we have this out. Now I'm going to teach you how to swab it, too. So we're going to swab it to the top. So what I do is I'll take my hand, put it right here. My fingers, yes, are over the buttons, but I am either pressing the buttons down or I'm actually over here. I'm not really even touching the buttons. Most of it's coming from up here. A little bit of a gentle twisting action. We got the cork grease going, so it's really easy. And then every part that we disassemble, uh, because the oboe is so fragile, we're actually going to want to clean it every time that we use the oboe. So this one is owned by the school. It's got its own little cloth. And the upper joint, this is the upper joint. It's a little bit hard to clean because it gets so thin. But what you're going to want to do is turn it upside down, drop the little weighted end in mm -hmm. until it doesn't go anywhere. Well, that's... I get the idea, though. Okay. You okay. run it through. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. And you do it with the other parts of the instrument, too. I'm doing it while turning it upside down. Okay. Gentle twisting to get it apart. And I'm going to just, you know what, I think I'm going to swab it after the video okay. is over. So I will end the video now because I don't want it to be too long. But high five. Thank high you. five. Yes. Sorry, it ran a little over, but you know. We did it! Yay!